In this lesson, we'll learn about the print and cut process, taking a print off your printer, and having the CE6000 contour cut around the images on the print for making decals. We'll cover how to make a contour cut path, how to use layers effectively for this process, registration marks, why they are needed and how they are used, and then the steps required to load the print onto the cutter. The software that we're going to be using in this lesson is Cutting Master 3 with Adobe Illustrator. While this may not be the software you're using, the process is very similar. The first step to the cut and print process is to create the cut path. Keep in mind that the cut line should be created after the design of the image is complete. A cut path can be any shape. For instance, a typical decal may be in the shape of an oval, rectangle, with or without rounded corners, a triangle, or any shape you see fit. Here we have a design that could use a circle or oval, but as you can see, it has unnecessary white space around the image. This design would be best suited for a cut path that contours the design. In some software applications, such as SignLab, FlexiSign, and GraphTech's new Studio application, creating a cut path that contours the shape is a very simple process. Whatever software you are using, review the manual or instructional video supplied with the software to learn how to create a contour path. In our case, we will be using Adobe Illustrator CS6 to create our cut path so that it contours this design. The first step is to select all the objects in the design Click on the Object pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Path, and select Offset Path. This little pop-up window appears. Here we can set the distance. In many cases it is hard to judge how this will look, so we can preview the outline by enabling Preview. It looks a little messy right now. We will take care of this in a minute. We can also choose how the corners will look. For instance, we may want to have the corners rounded a little. And now click OK. Now we need one more step. Click on the Window pull-down menu and make sure Pathfinder is open. Let's click on the first button, Unite. We'll want to switch the color so that there is no fill and the outline will have a color so we can see it. And there we have it. As mentioned before, any shape can be used as the cut path. However, the only thing we suggest against is using part of the design as your cut path. This can create difficulties. In cases where you want the cut path to be right on the edge, create a separate outline and enter zero for the distance. In this case, you may want to bleed out the design beyond the cut line. This will remove any chance of a sliver of white space occurring. The next step is to separate out the cut path from the rest of the design. This has to be done to avoid printing the cut line. Using the layers palette can help in this. What we will do here is create two layers, one for the items to be printed and the second layer for the cut path. The first step is to establish the first layer as the print layer. Next, we will create a new layer and label it as the cut layer. Now we can move the cut path to the cut layer. This is done by clicking on the cut path and in the layers palette, drag this dot to the cut layer. This will place selected objects to that layer, in this case, our cut path. To check this, we can turn off the print layer and this should leave the cut path. Next, we can create the registration marks. Registration marks are needed because they are like a mapping system to the cutter. Once they are scanned by the registration mark scanner, the marks provide information to the cutter, such as the starting point, the angle, and if there is any stretch or distortion. Registration marks help the cutter map out the placement of the cut path. Since Cutting Master 3 is a plug-in module for Adobe Illustrator, it can create and correctly place them automatically. 
We do this by clicking on the file pull-down menu, hover our mouse over Cutting Master 3, and select registration marks. This brings up this window. At the top, we have the choice of registration mark styles. Let's take a few minutes and go over the different registration mark styles and their purpose. There are essentially two main types of registration marks, type 1 and type 2. The differences are very simple. Type 1 is where the registration mark corners are facing inward, and type 2 is where registration mark corners face outward. Typically, type 2 is generally best since this allows for extra area in your design, but the choice is up to you. When cutting longer designs, there's another option of using what is called segmented registration marks. This is where, along with the registration marks on the four corners, there are registration marks that look like little T's between the corner registration marks, as you see here. Segmented registration marks are used by the cutter to determine if any bowing has occurred during the printing process. In a print like this, if only the four corners were scanned for, you might find that the beginning and the end of the printed image are cut accurately, but the midsection would be a little off. On the other hand, when reading these registration marks, the cutter can adjust the cut line to compensate for the shifting. When choosing a pattern, keep in mind that more segmented registration marks ensure better accuracy. Let's return to Cutting Master 3 and look at the different styles, now that we know the different patterns, and click on the pull-down list and examine the styles and types. Here we are given several choices. The standard styles are with the Type 1 and Type 2. Whether we want segmented registration marks Type 1 or Type 2 in the horizontal direction or vertical direction. If the design is longer in the horizontal direction, then you'd choose the H-dash segment Type 1 or 2. If the design is longer in the vertical direction, then you'd choose the V-dash segment, type 1 or 2. The other choices at the lower end allow us to use a reduced number of registration marks. For instance, when cutting a smaller design, you may find that there is only a need for two or three registration marks. This is helpful if you have a large number of decals to cut, perhaps on separate sheets, where reducing the number of registration marks will increase the production. In our case here, we'll use four marks, type two. Units will set two inches. The length is important for longer jobs. Having longer registration marks allows the sensor to more readily capture them during the scanning process. The thickness is important for jobs that have lamination. Once again, having thicker registration marks allows the sensor to capture the registration marks more readily during the scanning process. Margin is the distance between the cut path and the registration marks when relative to cut job is selected. When this is the choice, as a suggestion, set the registration marks as close as possible to the cut path, but keep in mind that the design should not be within the registration marks. Otherwise, the registration mark sensor will scan a line or object that is not the designated registration mark. Keep in mind when setting the margins for the registration marks, you should have at least three quarters of an inch or more between the edges of the media to the registration marks. This way, the registration marks will not be traveling under the wheels. Remember, anything outside the wheels is not recognized. When relative to media is selected, margin is the distance between the media's edge and the registration marks. A line document with registration marks will do just that. It will base the positioning of the registration marks with the document's origin. Once all the settings are to our liking, click Apply and then OK, or just click OK. Clicking Apply will allow us to see how the registration marks will look after any changes are made. This is convenient since we can see how the registration marks will lay out prior to clicking OK to finalize them. Let's press Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac and start over. There is another option that will allow you to place the registration marks where you would like to have them. 
Let's draw a rectangle. We will draw it large enough to surround the design, but close enough so there is not wasted space. What we will do next is have Cutting Master 3 create registration marks based on the corners of the rectangle. To do this, while the rectangle is selected, click on the File pull-down menu, hover over Cutting Master 3, and then click on Registration Marks. We will keep everything the same, except we will click on the Convert Rectangle checkmark. Now we can click OK. And the rectangle is converted to registration marks, using each corner of the rectangle as the points of the registration marks. Our design is ready for printing, but first we need to turn the cut layer off so that it will not print. Now we can send this design to the printer. Prior to sending the design to Cutting Master 3, we'll want to make sure we turn the cut layer back on. Once the design has been printed, orienting and aligning the sheet is somewhat critical, especially if it is a long print. When removing the printed sheet from the printer, make sure there is at least a 3 inch margin from the back registration marks and the back edge of the sheet. The best way to load the sheet is to first get the orientation of how the print is to be loaded. Click on the File pull down menu, hover over Cutting Master 3, and click Send to Cutting Master 3. At this point, it is recommended that you review the lesson on Cutting Master 3 if you haven't done so already. Click on the Cutters icon button. Up in the left-hand corner of the workspace, an icon shows the direction of the cut. This indicates that the bottom of the workspace is the front edge. So when placing the print in the cutter, that part of the design's edge is placed toward the front of the cutter. After placing the print in the cutter with the correct orientation, place opposite fingers on each of the two front registration marks, feeling for the front panel edge underneath the sheet. This will ensure that the print is aligned straight on the cutter. Hold the media in place and bring up the media set lever. Initialize the cutter by pressing Roll 1 Front Edge. This action places the registration marks behind the tool carriage. Next, take the arrow keys on the cutter and position the tool somewhat near the first registration mark. This is the registration mark closest to the control panel. The position is not critical since the cutter will automatically search for the first registration mark. Just know that the closer the tool is to the first registration mark, the quicker the process. Now we can go back to Cutting Master 3. Next, turn off the print layer so that it will not cut. To do this, click on the Configure Cut Job panel, which is this icon button here. Click on the Buy Layer button at the top. Notice below these are the two layers that we established. In this case, we want to disable the print layer. This removes the object set for printing. Now we can send the job by clicking on the Send button and then click on the CE6000. Once the job is sent, the sensor will start scanning the first mark. If for some reason it cannot find it, it will go searching for it. Once it finds it, it will continue on to the second mark, and so forth. Since it knows the location of the other registration marks, it doesn't need to do a search pattern, thus saving time. Once all the marks are found, it will start to cut the media following the adjusted cut path. 